Welcome back again. Today we'll keep going with Splunk 2 room, which is part of Cyber Defense Pathway. In this room, we're going to be tackling the uh, task for question 8 here with browsing. Answer guidance numeric with one more delimiter. So basically, the only thing we're given here is that we need to find out what is the version of the Tor browser that she has used to uh, uh, conduct her web browsing. So basically, uh, let me first grab the command and I will explain the command while I answer. So, okay, let's first grab this one. So the source of the data set is bot sv2 and here we're given, we are investigating Amber activity and we're also investigating, I want to find out events where Tor is involved or mentioned. Also, we will put all time and we began searching. So we will retrieve all of the events where Tor as a string or a keyword and Amper as a string or keyword are mentioned in the events. So we can narrow down the results and investigate more. Let's see here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have around 325 number of events. So definitely, if definitely this is this worth more uh, spotlighting. So we need to narrow down the results, but we can extract the answer just by looking at the interesting fields, and we see a field called image. Um, let's see here. Where is that field? Okay, so it seems like I need to define the source. So here we take a look at the source types. We have sys uh, moon, win host model, win register, win event log. Okay, and you see on the events, uh, as you can see, the uh, Amper is using Tor and from here, profile directory. Okay, now all we have to do is to find out the version of the Tor that has been installed. So we can take a look at um, the Sysmon events. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, interesting fields more one more time. Image. So in the image, as you can see here, the image field contains information about the path of the executable. And we see here, C users, Amper Turing, Downloads, Tor Browser, and Install 704, which is the version of the browser. And from here you get the answer. What is the public IPv4 address of the server running Brew, Brewer Talk? So find out the public IP of that server. So we take this and we reset the query to include only the keyword, which is the website name, in order to find out what are the available source types that we can select. Okay, we have 50 events. And if we take a look at, so what's the question? What is the IP v4 address of the server running? So most definitely it is uh, the IP is in the destination IP field because the server receives traffic. So if you take a look at the destination IP, you see the hits are on three IP addresses. And since these IP addresses are internal, uh, this leads us to the conclusion that this is the IP address of the server, the public IP address. Provide the IP address of the system used to run a web vulnerability scan against BrewerTalk. Provide the IP address of the system used to run a web vulnerability scan against Brewer Talk. So the same, the same search here, okay. But we take a look at the source IP addresses. You see, we got we have got two, or more than two. I see here. Yes, we have top ten values, and the most hits are coming from this IP address. When you scan 
a web server or when you use a web when you use a vulnerability scanner uh, you generate a high number of traffic or high loads of traffic so basically uh, this uh, concept leads us to believe the conclusion that this is the IP address of the server or the system you know contacting the scan okay so question three now we have to find out um, the URL path the URL path is part of the web server that's being attacked okay so basically Brewer talk is under attack and um, we have to find out what is the URL path that's being manipulated so most probably we will need, we will need this IP address and we'll filter down the traffic that include the IP address as a source so let's take the query here hit all time search Yeah, the machine is kind of slow, so you have to be patient until the events are retrieved. Nothing is found. Okay. So we have around <coughs> 494 events that, that include the IP address, the attacker IP address. Let's take a look at the source types. Suricata, stream IP, TCP, so mostly coming from the firewall traffic let's take a look at this and see if you can find out a field in the interesting fields which contains a URL path so normally you wouldn't find the URL path in the Palo Alto firewall <coughs> logs so we have to modify the query a bit let's take the website name filter down what are the available source fields and select or let's do it now select source type as hey HTTP let's search so around 140 events let's take a look at the source IP addresses Destination, okay, the source two, and we've got 100 URI path. The most hits coming on mem slash member.php. But how do we find out this is the exact or the real uh, correct answer? So let's select here in the source IP address, right? Select the attacker IP address. And we've got around 600, no, 8,000. If you take a look at the URL path, you see here, most hits are on slash member.php. And since the attack is concentrated and focused on this directory, uh, it is definitely the correct answer. What SQL function is being abused on the URL path from the previous question? So if we take, if we get back here and add this to the search, we will get all of the events where uh, the URL path here is mentioned. So we have around 662 events. Let's pipe this to the dub function to eliminate the um, duplicates entries and specify URI path as the subject of this function. And then we pipe this again to table, display URI path.
So we have one. Okay. Let's see here. So we will use form data. Let's get back to the question. What SQL function is being used on the URL path from previous question? So basically here, uh, we have to refilter this. Okay. URL path. Agent method. Form data. So with the form data here, as you can see, we can uh, take a look at the uh, SQL functions or SQL attacks. So what we will do here, we will type slash um, table form data. Let me check out the query. Yep, we will use ddub first, ddub to eliminate the duplicate records and then use table form data. So around 590 events, and if you take a closer look at the form data, we see here we have a check on the username and password, and if you follow the query all the way till ID or question ID equal Macman, you see a single code and update the update XML SQL function, update XML. So all of the queries contain update XML in the uh, URL query or as a, as a SQL function. So basically. This is the answer. What was the value of the cookie that Kevin's browser transmitted to the uh, malicious URL as part of an access attack? So we've got Kevin here, okay, uh, is contacting a kind of cross-site scripting attack. And uh, we have to find out what was the cookie used in that attack. So we get back to the query and we specify here Kevin as the Keywords. So we've got here some stuff on Kevin. Let's take a look at the source type. We have pan traffic, we have SMTP, win registry. Let's take a look at the interesting fields here. So what do we have? So until far, nothing is clear about how to find out the cookie. So we have to uh, see if we can find a way to select HTTP as a source type since cookies are involved in HTTP requests. So let me review the query here that I typed. Kevin, where is the one that has to do with Kevin? I think I didn't lock the query, so yes. Okay, so let's get back here. What was the value of the cookie that Kevin's browser transmitted to the malicious URL as part of an access attack? Answer guidance, all digits. Okay, so source types, um, there is no HTTP, Hi, HTTP, let's see here. Okay, let's type source, type equal stream, hey, HTTP. Let's see how many events. Are there so we have got 13 events which is quite manageable let's take a look at um, so we've got actually a field for cookies I have some entries but we have to find out what is the correct hit so since this is an investigation for an X attack in Splunk uh, to find out the X attack you have to select the attack and make sure it is error because XSS always generates errors so the tag here is error and select the tag, filter the queries, you've got nine events. Now you can type or say table, cookies, or say lead up, cookie, and then table, cookie, to display the cookies. So we have got three, and the right answer is this one. Nope, 89. I think the right one is not here. Let me cancel DDAP. Sometimes DDAP messes the uh, results. Table cookie. So we see um, 
a repeated pattern here for the cookies last visit as you can see all the time the same number the same digits and so we've got login attempts which doesn't count and here we've got something also login attempt so we have to only count these uh, cookies since they include an active session so the cookie is the one that is equal to the variable or that assigned to the variable last visit which is or which the one that ends with 89 what previous talk username was maliciously created by a spear phishing attack if you click on the hint because I think you think will be able to find the answer unless you take a look at the hint the attacker stole Kevin's CSRF token which is here and performed a trick from domain squires by using a homograph attack you can read more on homograph attack which is kind of impersonating domain names or brand names in order to trick users into clicking <coughs> on on links you send to them so there is a, a CSRF token here so we can search with this token see what source types we have got most definitely we will need to search through HTTP so we click on HTTP and we've got a total of nine events um, so what we're giving else brew talk is the name was so let's uh, <coughs> take this also and put that in the query as a keyword so also nine events okay find the username let's take a look at the interesting field so we have cookie okay form data so the form data here as you can see if we table or use table to formulate the results since this is a login or registration process the answer lies in the form data so we have here the username as you can see it is registration username equal this one and this is a uh, here password so this is the answer so i hope you found uh, the scenario helpful and in the next videos we will tackle down the rest of the tasks where every task includes something new and so new uh, learning experience in order to advance your knowledge with Splunk. Okay, thank you for watching.